Hello and welcome to another episode of Crazy About Fly Fishing. In today's episode, we're going to be 3D printing a fly reel. I'm here at Timanawa Community Hub, where they don't just have books, they also have a 3D printing service. So, let's find out more about it. Hi, yeah, so my name's Ayla, I work here at Timanawa and I'm an Integrated Services Assistant, which basically means if people need help, I help them. Cool, yeah, so our 3D printing services, basically, if you know what you want to do, great, send it through an email, uh, we'll get your quote back, it's a dollar per meter of material used, so it's only the material that is the cost. Um, we put you in the queue and we'll get you uh, an email when it's ready to pick up. The reel has now been 3D printed, so all the pieces, and uh, we're going to start looking at assembling it. So firstly each piece has got some uh, bits on here that need to come off, that was just to secure the pieces in place. And then we just have to sort of tidy up and clean up each of these pieces, a little bit of sandpaper that I'll be cleaning each piece up with. Let's go about that. One of the quirks and one of the problems of uh, 3D printing is that 3D printers are different and you know, so you need to take into account of the tolerances which Michael Hackney has done. Uh, so he's printed my different versions of certain parts that need to fit. So the click spindle is one and uh, that needs to fit over there. So I printed the standard version but unfortunately that is not big enough and it won't fit and you're not supposed to force it on so it's supposed to just slide over. So uh, I'm going to have to get the slightly larger version of this printed. There's three versions of this so I'm going to get the slightly larger version printed and then I'll get back to uh, see how we go. Well with a uh, bit of modification of the click spindle the 3D fly reel is assembled. Now we've just got to spool it with some line and see how it works. Let's quickly talk about this 3D printed fly reel before I spool it. It was designed by Michael Hackney, uh, Eclectic Angler and uh, he made it available after two years of design on Thingiverse under Creative Commons license. So you can just download the files and print it. It uh, has come together quite nicely to be honest. I'm quite happy with it. Uh, I'm not, I didn't do the click pull system that well I don't think, but it's fairly smooth. And the, This is a left hand wind. Um, you can get three different versions. You can get a neutral, a left and a right hand. Yeah, it's coming together quite nicely. That's quite a satisfying little click pull drag. One of the beauties of this reel is that it is completely plastic. There's no metal parts. I actually think it has real potential for a ultralight saltwater fly and uh, so I'll be testing that for sure. Uh, I'll be giving it a go in the saltwater on ultralight gear and see how that works and I'm definitely going to be testing it on trout as well to see how uh, well it does and holds up against New Zealand trout if it does. So yeah, let's uh, go ahead and spool this reel now. I'm going to be putting some Isla fly fishing backing on there, 100 yards. And then I'm going to be putting a Stone Creek Perfect Taper floating fly line on there. Ideal for trout, so yeah, this should uh, work quite well. Uh, let's get the rod out. This is going to be my new four weight V-top. Uh, which will be pretty cool uh, to use with this little reel. Look at that. So that's the uh, four weight V top there. Beautiful rod. Lovely reel seat. So for this, I only need two parts, the two bottom parts of the of the rod, and just so I can mount the reel and have a couple of eyes to run the line through. Okay. Now let's see how this reel fits onto the uh, reel seat here. There's actually three different uh, foot sizes you could do as well. I should have checked the foot sizes before I um, sorted the rod up, but it looks like it's going to fit all right. Yep, yep, now that fits fine. Now this reel is printed in PLA. 
and uh, I ended up with red because that is what the library had. Um, yeah, it's super light, super light. This reel like this um, seems to be functioning quite well. And you know, even the handle spins it around perfectly. You know, very well designed. I think it will easily keep up with a few trout. Okay, let's get on to the spooling. Well, I don't actually know what the capacity of this reel is. Uh, this is 100 yards of 20 pound standard trout backing. I don't think I need that much, but we'll see. Um, I'll just have to figure it out. I don't know what the capacity is of the reel, so hopefully it will fit this. It's fairly smooth, it's not super smooth. Um, but I think it's pretty good actually for a $6.80 3D printed plastic flow reel. The plastic's actually really tough. It's PLA, polylactic acid, which is made from all sorts of uh, recycled material and natural stuff. And it's actually biodegradable if you get it in the right sort of situation, but it won't actually degrade in water. So yeah, pretty cool. It's gonna be cool to see how this performs on the water. Okay, well, the backing's on. It looks like there's plenty of capacity. So uh, yeah, and now you can sort of, for the first time hear how the drag sounds. It's pretty smooth. Pretty cool. Quite a pleasing sound. Now the perfect taper fly line comes with two pre-made loops. Some people don't like the loops, but I quite like them because it also makes it very easy to exchange fly lines. And I'll quickly show you uh, how I do mine so that I can quickly change the fly lines up. So if you have loops in your fly lines, it can be very easy to change your line if you just do a big loop in your backing. Now I use a bimini twist and uh, in my saltwater reels, I actually used a, a double bimini to make it a bit stronger. That way you can loop to loop by looping your fly reel, fly reel through the uh, Bimini loop and then you can just loop to loop lines on. Um, it's quite efficient, so yeah, it works really well. So just do a Bimini, a big one. <laughs> now normally you'd loop the reel through the backing loop, but it's not necessary here because the line is still all curled up. So you can do the line as well. Just put it through and then standard loop to loop connection nice and tight and you've got your backing connection well i must say i've really not effectively ever spooled the fly line a new fly line without struggling with tangles they come up loosely spooled on these i guess to avoid tangles but um yeah what i do these days is i go manually and lay it out over the floor loosely so that i can just reel it up afterwards <laughs> so Let's go. Well, so there's the reel all spooled up. I ran into a bit of trouble. Well, because my backing isn't tightly packed, I didn't have resistance when I was winding it up. I just was a little bit uh, short on space, so I just ended up taking uh, about 20 yards off of the backing uh, just to fit the fly line on there. Well, I'm looking forward to going and testing this on the water and giving it a real go. Uh, I'm gonna do a salt water test and I'll do a fresh water test. So yeah, thanks to uh, Michael Hackney for the design of this and thanks to, to Manawa for uh, the printing and letting me film there. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you look forward to the on water testing. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.